Yeah. Okay, if I could have your attention. Uh, we're pleased to have with us today Leah Harrison uh, from the Children's Home Society, and she is the charitable giving director at the Children's Home Society. And what we were most interested in was uh, the Children's Home Society's uh, involvement in schools. And so we also have Lisa Coleman Smith, the Community Partnership Director, who's uh, dealing with the schools. And we have Catherine, who's very excited that her mama's going to be on TV. So, <laughs> very good. Uh, Lisa has uh, been in this area for about 15 years. She is a graduate of University of West Florida. Uh, she became involved uh, in this, I think, over the last several several years uh, and uh, feels like this is actually her family. And so she is uh, very excited about having her job and, uh, and interested in talking to us today. Lisa? Great. Hey. <laughs> uh, you guys are so, you guys are so great. <laughs> Well, and I know it's confusing, Leah and Lisa. I am actually Leah. Um, and thank you guys so much for having us here today. I'm really excited to see all of you guys. And um, thank you all for your service. We have lots of military members. So thank you guys for your service. We really appreciate that. Okay, so can they see this behind me though? Yeah, kind of? Yeah. Okay, okay, great. Well, you guys have a little handout, um, which gives you a, an overview of what we do at Children's Home Society. Today, I'm really mostly going to talk about one of our programs, but you'll see on the sheet we have 10 programs. Um, and really, if we run the gamut. We work with um, new moms before their baby's even born. Um, really, that early childhood, those early childhood services are strictly abuse prevention. We are working to ensure that these kids do not go into the system. We're working to make sure that family units stay together, they stay safe, they stay healthy. And then, of course, in the child welfare realm, we have some post-adoption services. Again, a lot of the families that we see are actually adopting out of the foster care system. And sometimes when those kids become teenagers, the parents say, oh, I, don't, I don't know if I can do this anymore. And so our job is to step in and have some really serious interventions to support to put supports around those families to ensure that the family unit stays together and sometimes that's all the parents need is is to know that this is trauma that this that's coming out in this child and they need some counseling support and then the next thing on here on the back side of the page is our counseling and mental health services this is a large portion of what we do um, I don't know if you guys have heard in the community, trauma-informed care has been talked about probably the past five to ten years, but we've been doing that for a really long time. All of our counselors are trained in trauma-informed care because trauma can mean all sorts of things. We do hear a lot about abuse, but it can mean a lot of other things as well. Um, and our, our process makes sure that it doesn't get to that abuse, and if it does, then we refer them to the services that they need. Community partnership schools, which we're going to dive into in just a minute, and then mentoring, outreach, and job training. So we also, you know, we work all the way before the baby's born, all the way up to actually youth of age 24, which is still youth now, apparently. <laughs> but really, if you think about children who are aging out of the foster care system at 18, uh, very different than me at 18, who had a mom and a dad at home with me, and I had resources um, and I was able to go to college and all of those things so these kids have been maybe living on the streets or um, you know not or in and out of foster care so we really wrap services around them to ensure that they have a path they're going to be an outstanding citizen we have a lot of kids who come out of um, our empower program who which is a lot of homeless youth actually we see in that program and guess what they decide to do they decide to go into our military which is amazing we have lots of success stories in that program so i just wanted to give that overview so you know who children's home society is as a whole but we are going to dive into i know you don't want me to move <laughs> i'm going to try my best uh, community partnership school so does, has anybody heard of community partnership school model anyone raise your hand if you have Nobody. okay cool okay um, 
So this is a model that actually was, I believe it was developed in upstate New York. Um, but Children's Home Society went to really see what is this model all about, about probably over 10 years ago. And they decided to, we are a statewide organization, although Lisa and myself, we serve the panhandle only. But um, CHS decided to try it out in the Orlando area in a high school. Um, and essentially it is, it is a 25 year commitment. So I'll say that up front. It's very different than you know, having a model or a program come in, not sure if the funding's gonna stay there, and then it not being there in three to five years. Um, we made a 25 year commitment, we'll probably be there a lot longer than that, but um, to really build trust um, and make some, some measurable changes and outcomes for these communities. But what it does is, um, this says, it's a, a, a both a physical place as well as a set of partnerships between a school and other community resources. You can go to the next slide. Um, and, and so it essentially, the school is the hub. And in our community, we are at C.A. Weiss Elementary School. I don't know if you guys know where that is, but it's kind of off of Fairfield. If you know where um, Waterfront Mission is on Fairfield, it's tucked back there on Q Street. And this really was a process with the school district. They are the ones who identified the school. Um, I think it was kind of between this one and Warrington Middle, which if you guys are in the schools, I'm sure you know about Warrington Middle as well. They could definitely use some resources. We'll get, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. But, um, you know, really when we talk about why, why are we doing this, we really look at what children are dealing with um, in our community and what the school district did, they said, Weiss is really the highest pocket of poverty. We have, I mean, abuse calls, you know, I mean, I could go down the list, but that was the area, the condensed area around the school that had those indicators. And so that's why Weiss was selected. CHS had never done a community partnership school in an elementary school, so we were the first elementary school. Um, and so essentially what children, what community partnership schools does is really bring those resources to the school so that the school becomes the hub for really the entire community around it. You know, you start smaller, you start with the kids that are actually in the school and you have, I'm probably going past uh, this slide. You can go to the next slide. Okay. Okay, yeah, I'm kind of like, I skipped ahead. Okay, so um, really the one of my most favorite parts, so I was actually able to be a part of the process of bringing the Community Partnership School here to our community um, from an outside perspective. And what I really loved about the process is they didn't only, obviously you look at the data and all those things I talked about, the pockets of poverty, but once they identified the area, um, there was a needs assessment and it was done with the community. It was not done just with the data that we see. Um, they had people go out and ask people that live around the school these questions. What do you need? Um, because we can look at it and say, oh, well, this community is definitely going to need food or whatever it may be. But if that's not what they're saying they need, you know, again, building trust is very important in this process because it's a long process, it's not a short process. And um, so you end up with key core partners, which obviously the school district is one. You have a nonprofit arm, which is us at Children's Home Society. And then you have a, a health component, um, which is Community Health of Northwest Florida, if you guys are familiar with them. Um, and then you have a university, the University of West Florida is our partner here um, to be able to provide you know, data and all of those sorts of resources so that we can measure what we're doing. Okay. Next slide. Yes, those are the four core partners. Okay, and so like I said, CA, you can go to the next one. CA Weiss Elementary, that is um, the school that we're in here locally. Um, and so I, I would like to play this quick video. This gives you a snapshot of really what it looks like in the school and um, the components around it. Let's play the video. Take it away. I know it. 
and you're going to hear Hi everyone, you. welcome to CAY's Community Partnership School. We are a school unlike any other. When you walk in our lobby, you see a beautiful example of how our community has come together to support such an amazing opportunity to help children remove barriers to their education and their personal growth. We are very proud to be a community partnership school certified through University of Central Florida. And we couldn't be more excited to be going through this process for another certification and affirmation of the wonderful work that we do here. As you go through the halls of our school, you'll see that we have a lot going on here. But when it really started and where our partnership really formed was our stake in the ground, which is our playground. We started off with our playground because uh, when everybody started coming to Weiss to talk about uh, this project, um, they realized that the school didn't have a playground. It was my first year as principal here. And they, um, there were just some tires that were unpainted stuck in the ground, and um, we, had, we spent some time painting them, but it was felt that there was a need for um, a, some place for the kids to play at school and after school. So we teamed up and um, wrote an Impact 100 grant. We were granted or won the 100, Impact 100 grant, which was $106,000, and able to open and put a playground in that is serves as a playground for recess um, during the school day, but then it's open after hours, uh, after school is out, and on weekends and all summer for the kids to come and have a safe place to play. It was really an amazing part Community Health Northwest Florida and um, Children's Home Society to really get that going um, and to put that stake in the ground of our long-term relationship that we all agreed to partner on. Um, with University of West Florida's help in really working through the community needs assessment, we found that uh, access to health care was definitely a challenge. So our partners at Community Health Northwest Florida jumped right in. Um, the school district granted them some space to convert some classrooms into a full working pediatric clinic, which has been absolutely amazing. We have hardened doors so that it can be accessed from the outside as well as the inside. So we are open to the community to work um, and provide medical services as well as to those children and families that are part of CAY's Community Partnership School. Then when we move away from the clinic, we go down to um, our, our parent engagement room, material that a parent could come and check out to work with their child from um, early on, two, three years old, on up <clears throat> into fifth grade. And um, we also have material that parents can check out for themselves, such as like a GED, practice book, um, and different things for them um, on how to help their child at home. We have um, computers in the room for the parents to come and support job, um, do whatever they need to do on the computer. It's, it's their space. We also have some of our parent um, classes that we offer in the room. Our uh, parent coordinator is housed in there, as well as our wellness coordinator and our community school director. So um, they are all very close to that parent uh, resource room. So CHS has been the lead on behavioral health services in partnership with the school district. We have a counselor that's embedded in the school and here to serve those children. They serve on the operations team to help out with that as well. So that we make sure services are flowing from referral to hub services to the counselor and through the district as, as we need to serve. One of the other features that I think really makes us unique at CAY's Community Partnership School is our after school programming component. We really have made huge strides in how we have structured that program to support the outcomes of the school. So when we contract with our teachers that work at the school to stay after school for two and a half more hours, after a long day on their feet, um, the commitment is not only on the nonprofit end, but also with the these children and their success. So all of our kids um, are targeted for this particular program, and we looked at a variety of internet. That's okay. I can pick up from there. Okay. If that's easiest. Yeah. Can I stay over here? You can still see me on the screen from there, right? Yeah. I okay. can share the other one. Okay. 
school. Um, and so one thing, I wanted you guys to see the inside of the school itself. Um, boy, we're ready to have people at the school to be able to do tours. We're ready to be able to do that again, but we're very proud of it, um, as, you, as you can hear and you can see. But some of the components that uh, they were talking about there, when we did the needs assessment, um, health and mental health really rose to the top. Those were, those were two of the biggest things. And what was interesting to me, they do a back to school bash and our first year of implementation, um, we all went to the back to school bash and uh, Community Health of Northwest Florida brought their little bus out there. And, you know, but we also had like free stuff and games and all sorts of food and nobody was over by the food. All the parents were lined up with their kids so that they could get their immunizations. And then they came over to get their food and play the games and all of that stuff. That's how important it was to them. And that was really eye-opening to me that this needs assessment was right. These parents needed accessibility to healthcare. And so you saw the clinic there. Um, again, it was very neat to see that transformed. That was just old classrooms and Weiss was able to take that space and say, yes, Community Health of Northwest Florida, you can use this for a wellness clinic. And man, has it grown. Um, you know, initially, like I said, we started with the kids in the school. Um, now the clinic is available to siblings. And um, it's said in the video, but you can access it from the outside as well. So um, that is a big deal too. They don't have to go through and check in through the school. Um, the other neat thing, and Lisa, correct me if I'm wrong here, because I don't know if this has changed, but um, the parents can sign off for the principal to, uh, is that still? No, that's correct. Either the okay. principal or myself, they can sign off to have, they can appear via video so they don't have to miss work. Yeah, they don't have to leave work, which is huge for this community. Um, you know, we were finding there were kids who had lots of dental problems and their parents just had not found the time to get there because they're working multiple jobs. And you know, all, these families already live in toxic stress. Um, and so this model has relieved so many barriers. And in turn, we are seeing these kids' lives change. Um, and, and their families as well. Uh, this is a, a little bit older statistic. I need to get a newer one, but you can see um, this is this is a behavioral statistic, but um, which is important. We need the kids to be in school, and we need them to behave and you know act, you know act well. But can you go back to that real quick? Okay. Um, so when that was the year before implementation, yes. Um, 425 out-of-school suspensions, and two years later, it was down to 113. We need to get those new numbers. We but actually had less than 100 last year, of course, I need from the 2019. So we've decreased our out-of-school suspensions and behavioral issues by almost 400% since the implementation of the community partnership school. It's amazing. And what that does is it has them in school learning versus other things, and so they've they have, we have a counselor in on, well this year we'll have one counselor there all week long instead of having them alternate so that the kids know exactly who they're going to and it builds trust with them. So we're excited about opening the school fully back up this year. Yes, absolutely. Can you go to the next slide? I'm gonna skip over this one. I am gonna send this uh, video in case you guys want it. They did an Angels in our midst. Um, and it talks about the impact, but you know these are these are some of the statistics. I'm not going to read all of these, but we already talked about behavior. Um, but another piece, um, obviously, was mental health. Um, like we said, we do have a full trauma-informed mental health uh, program, and we do have one at least one full-time staff there. I don't. Sometimes we pull in additional staff, don't we, for mental health counseling, if needed, depending on. We used to have two, but we're doing one full-time now. But the here's the thing: the, the the administrative staff and the teachers are all trained in trauma-informed care. Um, they they start out with a virtual one and then end up going to a class. Last year, because of COVID, they couldn't send anybody. But most of the teachers there are in are trained in trauma informed because as most of you know you heard the news we had a shooting at one of the housing projects where a third of our children um, live and so but the school stepped in CHS stepped in we made sure that they all had counselors there 
we went out into the community to make sure any of the parents that were affected by it could get counseling and so we make sure that the that we address trauma early on so that it doesn't affect their education absolutely um, so, so the health and mental health component, and then um, in the video she talked a little bit about um, parent engagement. That is not something, the school has not had a PTA like my child's school does. Um, so some wraparound services around that too. Um, and Lisa really heads up, Lisa is in charge of, you know, all of the things. <laughs> but um, after the director, we were able to add um, help me with the position names but a, a parent engagement coordinator we have a family and community engagement coordinator and we also have a wellness coordinator wellness coordinator yeah who ensures that because uh not last year but the year before every single one of our children in our school were able to receive <coughs> a screening an eye exam and glasses if needed at no cost to the parents if they didn't have insurance we made sure that was covered yes this year because that was a one-time funding what we did was we found funding this year to be able to screen all of our new students and follow up with any of the kids that needed more so yes, thank you and then the other thing I did want to touch on is after school care um, that's something that again I've seen the impact that it has because a lot of these kids were just going home to Oakwood Terrace which is the new name, it's, we're not right. going to call it the old name, they're trying to rebrand it. <laughs> but Oakwood Terrace, where a lot of these kids live, but a lot of them are going home alone because their parents are working multiple jobs. And it's honestly, it is not safe. Um, or they're, if they're a little bit older, they're getting into things they should not be getting into and they're getting into trouble. So the after school program, number one, safety, for these kids, but number two, at our school, we're able to look at all the metrics and really identify the kids who have those big learning gaps. And with the after school program, and we have a summer program that also identifies those same kids to really focus on those areas to close that gap educationally for them so that they can excel the next school year. Um, yeah, I think I talked. We do have, you know, some wraparound again for the parents to get their GED. That was kind of like the, the last piece. She talked a little bit about that, but you know, the parents need to have a solid foundation too, so that they can provide for their kids at home. And so that was kind of the, the last key piece of this model. And so I wanted you guys to know, I, I, I think we were talking to Dr. Kincaid about this, but we are, like I said, a statewide organization. Lisa and I just serve this area, but uh, CHS does have 20 other community partnership schools throughout the state. And that, this is just a map showing the different schools that we are at. We were the first elementary school and we were the first school to be a Affirmed, is that how you say it? Yeah, we were the first elementary, elementary school to be, to be accredited, and then we were the first to be fully affirmed. Yes. Not yeah. that we're and so this is our, we're rolling <laughs> out of our <laughs> fifth year of implementation of this. So, um, you know, we still have lots of, lots of things to do, but I do feel like, you know, seeing it with my own eyes, seeing the improvements that have happened in just five years uh, is really amazing. Um, and so I thought this may be a question. A lot of people ask us when we do presentations, how can you engage? Um, and Lisa can talk about this a little, a little bit too, but we always, 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 so Weiss is a uniform school, um, which is great for these kids, but they don't always have what they need. So we always need these blue and white polos right here. <laughs> Um, undergarments are something we always need, socks, belts, adult size clothes. We do have some children who are just, you know, they need a larger size and we don't always get those um, donated. And then shoes are another thing that we always need. And then a lot of people ask from a funding perspective, which if you guys have questions about, you know, I can tell you how we get our funding and where the gaps are and all of that stuff, but I won't bore you with that if you're not interested in that. But I did mention, you know, our after school and summer programming, those are areas that are just extra. The I program, that is extra. So we're always looking for funding to be able to, um, to do those things. And we always end up finding it um, so that we can provide for our kids.